Okay. He's texting the we Jokers. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. So, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Comet Pinata, a very special one. This is very significant. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're here at Zany's in Nashville, here with Chance Willie. We're going to... We're going to... We're going <laughs> to... We're going to mention something in a second. But we got to thank our sponsor, um, uh, suethecollector.com, okay? <laughs> Credit cards, student loans, mortgages, car loans, hospital bills. <laughs> Did you know you have a lot of rights if these ever go to debt collections? That's right. Consumers, not debt collectors, have a huge list of rules they have to abide by. And that's where the law firm suethecollector.com comes in. Suethecollector.com is a national consumer law firm that only helps consumers. The lawyers at Sue the Collector have literally helped thousands of people turn the tables on debt collectors and put an end to illegal harassment, abuse, and repeated phone calls that many people find themselves subjected to through no fault of their own. The lawyers at Sue the Collector can help everyone in all 50 states, have won millions for consumers over the years, and have canceled over $1 billion in consumer-related debts. That's right. That's a... Lot. <laughs> Billion. That's right. Off to a good start. Right now, they really want to speak to anyone that's, that's had their car repossessed. Did you know consumers do not have to allow a repo man to take their cars against their will? Don't do this because it's our sponsor. In most cases, you can actually legally refuse to let them take your car. If you've ever objected to a car repo and they still get your car against your will, you may be sitting on a very valuable case. So call Sue the Collector's office right now. It's one eight seven seven bad repo or one eight seven seven two two three seven three seven six. Again, that's one eight seven seven bad repo or one eight seven seven two two three seven three seven six. They're open right now to take your call. Again, one eight seven seven bad repo. Suethecollector.com. Thank you so much for sponsoring Comedy Pinata. That being said, I've got to just get this out of the way. We had chance on our last episode. Yeah, last week. It was great. Last week. That's right. It was uh. It was an episode with you and Lucy, who is the manager here at this great club, and you just came on, you lit it up, you had so much fun, you brought a hoot. spark of energy to it, and as soon as you left the room, Taylor, Adrian, Georgie, uh, we all discussed, we're like, that was great. Yeah, it, it was, was so awesome. much fun. And so we had a discussion and said, would you like to come on and be our co-host, like a permanent co-host, and... You said, how much does it pay? How much does it pay? He said, I nothing. Said, I said, that's about what I'm making right now. <laughs> so let's, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's line it up. I said, I feature for people everywhere. Let's do this. I, I said, yes. I was very grateful for the opportunity. I didn't think about, though, the last time I was here, I made fun of everybody in the room who works on this show, and I, now I'm back. And now I'm just you're back. Like, and now hey, it's time to pay the a, filler, you son of a bitch. Okay. Yeah. God, well, thank you so much for, for joining us. Obviously, we've worked together quite a bit here at Zany's and on the road. We worked together in Madison. Comedy Comedy, Comedy State, on State, Madison. yeah. We played a, a little putt putt. Played a little putt. Played a little putt putt. Best green room in the country. That's right. Best green room in the country by far because it's one where it's their actual office space. You're separated from the peasants, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The peons. We don't The peons. Around, it's no on the third greets. floor. You can look down, you can spit on them from the window when they're out there <laughs> protesting you for leaning right. You know, all, it's great. It's a great. But you got a pool table in there, a putting green, uh, a fantastic, like, huge widescreen TV. You can oh, hook your best. music up. It's the And it's such a great vibe in there, too. Oh, it's the best. Because the last thing you want to do is be, go like, hear the show going on. You, you know? don't want to hear it. <laughs> you, you don't want to hear it. it. You don't want to. You want to be around the show. You, at least for me, I like. I want to be around, away from everybody. I don't want to hear. Yeah. I don't want to hear. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear any of that. I don't want to hear like rumbled gurglings, or I don't want to hear the wait staff bitching about. Oh you know, yeah, I heard your stories last week. You're always in the bathroom whenever somebody's on stage. It could be like a historic. <laughs> like, right. you can, can you believe what Dave Chappelle did last week? Like, ah, I was in the bathroom. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's always been in the bathroom yeah. for three fucking hours. <laughs> so, so thank yeah. you for joining. Uh, Is that? Oh shit. <laughs> you don't know if that's picking up on the audio. I always do this. I'm always like, I do like the prima donna, like, oh, it's the fucking, uh, somebody's having a heart attack right I'm now. I'm so used to being if on you, set. Hello. <laughs> if you can't hear that, there's a siren going by. There, there's a man dying yeah. outside, and Steve's like, but the audio. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for joining. Now, uh, where, you started in Chattanooga again, right? Yeah, I'm from Chattanooga. I kind of started here or whatever, just stones throw away from here or whatever. And but. whether you're off stage or on stage, you always look like you're ready to go fishing. I am always ready to go fishing. I usually have a fishing rod in my car. 
<laughs> and it got me a job before. That's like what a hillbilly town I'm from is like. I used to just roll around with the fishing rod in my car because you never, you never know. You know what I mean? It's you like, never know. It's like uh, guys in the hood always keep a gun on them. Like I always have like, <laughs> I always have like a, you know, just in case. You're going past a creek, you just see a, a little ripple. Yeah, like, oh, and it fuck. got me. A, I went, I went for a job interview. And the guy walked in, and he was like, that's your ugly stick in the car. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to get this job. Got the job. Keep a fishing rod in your car. It's pretty sick. See, I'm that, like from a podo. That could go a few different ways, though, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. He's You're like, in for an interview. He says, do you bring your ugly stick? Do you bring your ugly stick? You, ugly st- <laughs> you like, got your ugly sir, stick with what, uh, <laughs> what do I need to do to get this job? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't have an HR department. <laughs> liberal. That's <laughs> kind of fucking weird, though. Well, I mean, you guys were talking about fishing prior to then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I I saw he had like the uh, like the um, the hinge pictures of him with the giant fishes sure, on yeah. the wall, and I was like, oh yeah, this is about to be a layup. You got your ugly stick in the car. Yeah, I got it's your ugly stick one. in the car. Yeah, he's like a uh, like a Coen Brothers character. Everybody <laughs> in the South is like a Coen Brothers character. It's it's the craziest place to grow up. It's awesome. Well, um, look, we're gonna get into this, but moving forward, you and I will be at the helm, and. Uh, Along the way, I, I've seen some... Look, we're still working out the kinks, right? This is still a fairly new show. I think this will be episode, like, I don't know, in the teens or something like that. So it's still brand new. But what we'll do is we will... Uh, you and I will always be at the helm. We'll have guest comics come in. Uh, I know I have some friends coming in uh, shortly here through Zanies that we'll have on the show. So a lot of comics. But every now and then, we still have the opportunity to have some country artists along the way or musicians. And I like to do that, too, because... The reason we bring them on is there's a live performer aspect right. to it as opposed to just straight up comics. So you and I'll be at the helm from the comedy angle. And then I like having some entertainers as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'd much rather talk to musicians than comedians. I would too because yeah. you're, getting a, you're getting a totally different perspective. But also every comic wants to do what they do. Yeah. And for some reason... Those rock stars want to do what we do. And it's like, they why? They say that. I just think they're I very think so. poly- Yeah, I think kind of... They, they, they want to be mean funny. It? They want to be funny. But they, they do want to be funny because you hear them. You you watch every like uh, rock star when they're on stage and in between the songs they're like trying yeah. to make jokes and they make like bad dad jokes. Bad. You know, yeah, it's, it's bad. bad. But it, I mean, they- I'll, I'll tell you the only well, there's a handful of people I've seen that are genuinely funny on stage. Right, like and can be a rock star. It, it's like it's almost like when you see a rock star that's funny. It's like oh fuck, it's Ryan Gosling. Yeah, the guy's good looking. He's shredded. He can act. He can dance. He can do comedy. He can sing. It's like fuck this guy. He can do it all. He's a piece of shit. I want to sue my parents. <laughs> but yeah. that being said, like you ever see Ryan Gosling in The Nice Guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking hilarious. That's a great movie. It's one of my favorite films. And that dude is so goddamn funny. And I'm like, and you can do like everything else too. Exactly. Yeah. It's unfair. Yeah. It's, it's not, not a, right. And you yeah, know he's not fucking a fair hung. World. It's like, of course he is. A piece of shit. He's got his ugly stick in the car too. He's, he's ready at any something, time. Right? Like he it's fucks got, kids or something. You know, there's like, gotta be a there's good, Nazi memorabilia <laughs> in the basement. There's, there's something. something. He's like a got a Hitler fixation <laughs> <Yeah>. or <laughs> He can only get off of, like, there's a Pepsi bottle up his asshole. It's like, oh, thank God he's not perfect. Okay. Exactly. Um, it's, it's like when you see those, like, tall and skinnies they build in Nashville. It's like they're too perfect. That's coming down. It's coming down, Gosling. <laughs> do you know Ryan Gosling? No. You're like a Hollywood guy. No, never Who do you him. know? Who's the most famous person you know? Uh, probably Vince Vaughn. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's probably the most famous. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know a few folks. But I, my point was is that I've been to a few concerts where I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Great, unbelievable. Michael Bublé, fucking incredibly talented, great voice, throwback, obviously, does the standards, the soccer mom shit, not necessarily into, but I'll tell you this, fucking funny. Yeah, like my, genuinely, Bublé? genuinely funny. No shit. Yeah, I was, I was shocked. And it's like, and you got a great hairline. Yeah. And you can sing and you have the voice like honey. It's like, fuck, man. Well, you got to have it. He's Canadian. Fuck him. Who? Oh, Buble? Yeah. Oh, he's Canadian? Yeah, he's like a male oh. Celine Dion, right? <laughs> but you gotta have a sense of humor if you just do Christmas albums. Like, you gotta be self aware. <laughs> you, you can't be the Christmas <laughs> album guy and, like, take yourself really seriously. Yeah. That's not gonna play, right? He was great. Better than Ezra, Kevin Griffin. Very funny. And that's why we had him on episode five, I believe, because I got to know him a little bit and then I saw his show. I'm like, this guy's fucking hilarious. Oh, dude, yeah. Like, very funny. And then there was um, Harry Connick Jr. Oh, really? Harry Connick Jr. was genuinely funny. 
No shit. Yeah, he, he had some good lines. No way. Well, and, and, and a full-on entertainer. He's doing the drums, trumpet, everything. Like, uh, piano, singing, dancing. Well, I feel like all those old jazz guys are, like, really funny, though. Maybe, like, all maybe the, that's the, the recurring theme. Even the song, like, the Lu Louis Prima songs are, like, funny. You know what I mean? Like, they're, like, funny songs. Like, I'm just a gigolo. Yeah. Like, that's, he, that's he's riffing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. those guys were just, because you had to do everything back then. Like, you had to be an, because you know, they're, like, Vegas guys, right? Yeah, you had to do everything. The thing I like about Louis Prima is that knowing I, I'm like fascinated with Vegas history. Oh, really? And all the entertainers, and no matter who was headlining, Vegas I think was so much smaller back in the day. Right. And even as it expanded, um, Louis Prima and Keely Smith performed a show. I think they did like a one o'clock or two in the morning show. So after all the headliners were done, mm. so if Sinatra was in town, Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, Wayne Newton, obviously a regular there, uh, all of them would go to to Louis Prima's show. And oh, then it really? became like a, a free for all. Really, it was just like, hey, let's just riff, let's fuck around, no let's shit. goof off with the band leaders. And oh, so it he was like the Josh like, Wolf of <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he was, <laughs> yeah, the, he was yeah. the after hours Josh Wolf of Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not as in good of shape either. <laughs> yeah. Josh Wolf is frighteningly like in great shape. Oh yeah, dude, he's jacked. He's like it's, hot grandpa. Yeah, it's crazy. He goes to my roommate's gym and he'll see Josh yeah. Wolf. He's like, God damn, yoked. Josh Wolf. Yeah, he's yoked, dude. Jo most comics are funny because you weren't like that, but then every now and then Josh posts a picture of him and it's like. Oh, that, oh, oh, that's not Photoshop. That's like your real body. Yeah, he's that, on like that Rogan tip, though. You know what I mean? Like Alpha Brain supplements, takes mushrooms, he sees the light, you know, and he's just yeah. like a workout guru guy. Guys who can smoke weed and go to the gym, they're just built different. I, get, I can't do that. that that's what Josh weird, will... Yeah. yeah. Here. Ah, oh, here we go. Hey! Louis Anderson. Any thoughts on Louis? Louis Anderson? He's yeah. great in uh, baskets. Have you seen that? Mm. When he plays his mother, basically? Oh, dude, it's so funny. Yeah, I just I, I went when when Louis passed, unfortunately, I, I went down a rabbit hole and watched um I watched clips of his special, I think in twenty sixteen. There was another one that was pretty recent. Um but obviously I, I, I became aware of him back in the day when I was alive and you weren't. <laughs> uh but like on all the late night, you know, comedy showcase shows they'd have like caroline's comedy hour and evening at the improv and stuff lou was a staple on those things and then obviously went on to come in america and blew the hell up but when i moved to los angeles and became a regular at the comedy store i had run into louis quite a few times and you know of course the first time you move to la you're a young comic you're excited you're like oh my fucking god like i grew up with this and now i'm on the same bill as like somebody you you idolize whatever it's really, really cool. It, it is a fun feeling, and he was one of the few that made that bit, that that moment in time, a lot easier than it could have been. You know, really. There's other people that are like, ah, oh, yeah, it's good to see you. Like oh, the first time yeah, I met Dice, I... you're like, now knowing Dice, it's like, yeah, of course I should have expected that. Right. But Louis was the complete opposite. What was Dice like when you met him? Was he he was a, he was like the Dice man? It was like. You know the feeling you get when you step in an elevator and you fart and everybody turns on you? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like it's that. <laughs> it's like that. It's like, ah, fuck, sorry, I shouldn't be here right now. Oh, um, shit. But Louis was the complete opposite, just a total sweetheart. And every time I ran into him, he'd always pull me aside and we'd have a nice conversation. Um, even just look at him. I mean, he's, he's Minnesota nice. He's yeah, a total yeah. sweetheart, and it came across in his comedy. Yeah, he's got like the he's a sweet guy, but like in, deep down, there's like a seething with rage part of him where he's like mad at his mother. Like I think that's like the most brilliant <laughs> thing about people from the Midwest is like they're uh, he's like Polka Dot Man in uh, the new Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, what a crazy pull! But you're exactly like, right. <laughs> deep cut, but I did it. That was a I great. One. That was a great one. Huh? I did it, Mama. I did it, Mama. We made. Um, it. Well, I love Louis Anderson, so I'm very excited to watch this. Get the cans on. Here we go. Cans. It's an industry term for you guys at home. It's obviously tonight's oh, show. Sorry, I'm sweating, but if I don't, I'll explode. <laughs> this is what America knew every comic in the world. Yeah. This, I mean, he became huge. He knew what to right? expect. Yeah. My favorite thing is when you go over to someone's house and you're fat, they, they overcompensate. Oh, come on in, Louie, and sit down here on this concrete sofa. <laughs> Or the reinforced steel lawn furniture. <laughs> do what I do, head right for that wicker. <laughs> Just swinging the pendulum. Oh, boy. People say, Louie, why do you do those fat shows? Because if I didn't, you guys would sit out there and go, do you think he knows he's that big? <laughs> 
like I woke up one morning. Oh, no. <laughs> Honey, get in here. <laughs> I am from Minnesota. Any Minnesotans? Could I get it right home with you? <laughs> oh, where would we put them? <laughs> I love Minnesota. We go back every year. It's a great outdoor state. Do a lot of camping. Of course, when I go camping, the bears put their food up in the trees. Oh, hello. hey -o. I had a very... I had that very strict Midwestern upbringing, a very strict father, the kind of guy who hates everybody. You know, my dad, we'd be in the family car driving down the street... And He'd spot somebody walking down the street that was a little different. Oh, he'd slow that car down. <laughs> Look at that. For crying out loud. <laughs> Get my rifle. <laughs> or he would, he would say things that made no sense to you when you were a kid. He'd be driving, the traffic would get rough. You know, if I was the last person on earth, some moron would turn left in front of me. <laughs> and when he'd say that, too, if I was the last person, you'd always turn to your brother and go, wish he was, don't you? There we go. Louis Anderson. Hey! That was great. That was great. Um, is that the one where he walks out and the first thing he says is, uh, I'll make this quick, I'm in between meals? Uh, is it, that 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 clip? I think we skipped I don't know past if that it. Was the, there was also the other line. Let me move this. So you can see me with the mic stand. Right, you know, right. Had it just like it's so great because the minute he says that, it just like you're acknowledging what the audience is seeing instantly. Right. Yeah. And within seconds, now they're totally on your side. Exactly. Totally on your side, and you go on from there. And the fact that he acknowledges his appearance and made a living off it for totally. the first few years, I think like. You know, it's the same. Like, if you're a black comic and you're on the road and you're in a predominantly, you're in, you know, uh, you know, Tulsa. Right. Or Boise. Totally. Where you're <laughs> outnumbered. Right. Uh, yeah, you're going to have those first five minutes of acknowledgement jokes to kind of. Absolutely. Acknowledge what's going on. And, uh, you know, even early on in my career being Korean and Irish, I would just nip it out of the way. You got to get it out of the way up top. Get out of the way up top and get to your bits. But, uh, yeah, I, I like, it's almost like. I don't know, when I'm watching Louie, it's like, you know, it, it, I, I think sometimes it's unfair to watch somebody's late night talk show set because they're so neutered and watered down. And especially right. back then, this has got to be mid-80s where, you know, obviously what is acceptable in society today that you could get away with on a late night talk show set, right. you could never, ever do that to, today, like, you know, compare. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because we're, we're so much more freer and looser to say things at 1130 at night. But the difference is nobody's watching TV at 1130. So yeah. when he did that set, there might be 15 to 20 million people watching yeah. that set. Well, I mean, that's like, I think that's kind of like what's, uh, you know, uh, not to make, you know, like a overly the, the defense for clean comedy because I like dirty stuff. But yeah. that is kind of like the art of it is he's trying to like weave in some real shit into yeah. like a clean premise. But like one of those jokes was clearly like, yo, my dad was a racist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like my dad was a racist asshole. Right, yeah. You know, and it's like weaving, like that's the subtext. So that's kind of, uh, sure. while it's not hitting you over the head with something like dark, or I kind of like that more, honestly, because yeah. I'm so desensitized with like, uh, you know, like dick and ball jokes or whatever. It's nice to see somebody kind of like be subversive and get yeah. it to work, you know? I, I like how he started. He started off a lot stronger. There's a lull. We saw half the set. I, I'm sure it ended on a high note, like a really right. strong. He brought it home with his closer for that one. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that set. But I, I like him more than I like the set. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, you like, like the personality I, more than those shows. I like listening to Louis. I like watching Louis. He's just so, uh, you know, relaxing. And right. He's comfortable. He's a comfortable presence to be around. Yeah. The set itself was good. Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't say it was great by any means, but out of the gates, he had he he got a laugh out of me. And then the yeah. rest was like, oh, it's, it's funny. And yeah, after that, you're like, these are jokes. Like, these set are up. Jokes, these yeah. are jokes, you know. But I, don't, I guess for somebody my age, there's like a novelty to that because yeah. I haven't, like, seen as much of it. Like, everybody I watch is like... So here's my story and my experience, you know. So it's kind of nice to see just people like doing jokes, even if yeah. they are kind of like, not even hacky, just kind of like you know where they're going, because it's yeah. like at least it's like quick and there's like a pace to it and a rhythm as opposed. You're to right. Like, I mean that is a throwback set though, because yeah. I think as stand up has gone on, it's changed so much and it's opened up 
to become many different things. You know, you, right. you go from the Borscht Belt where it's just like one liners, and yeah. then you, you know, from in the vaudeville Borscht Belt, uh, the Catskills, which yeah, boom, yeah. boom, hey, boom, hey, boom. Hey, yeah. And then, uh, then you get Carlin and Pryor that are getting more personal, and Lenny Bruce, who's starting to infuse like hard swear words when you used to take my wife, please, to, right. you know, the, you know, introducing, you know, blue language into it. And nowadays, there's, so, you know, when I started, alt comedy was the big thing. Right, right. So and when were that, was that like? That was like late 90s. Late 90s. And that was very esoteric, kind of yeah. like, isn't this more clever than it is funny? Right. And and now, I think what it is, is the, the mainstays will always be the mainstays. You'll always have classic comedians you'll always have classic bits you always have classic comedy and you know what i mean by that i think what what this new the new level is is people getting extremely vulnerable and yeah. discussing things that were maybe taboo before like when you're talking about mental health like, right right and really honing in on an hour special about that or you know like ali wong going up on stage pregnant and yeah, discussing yeah. that and the transformation of body. And it's it's so crazy because she did that. And then Kira Sultanovich, I think, was taping an hour at the same time. And she was pregnant. So you had two people doing that at the same time. Oh and then Ali got all this acknowledgement. Obviously, it was a great special. But yeah. I think Kira's just as talented and had the same kind of premise. But it got, like, <laughs> swept under the rug. So. Oh, man, those poor kids, dude. They're going to come out like Vietnam vets, like <laughs> shell shocked. And like yeah. I spent eight months of my in the womb on stage just under that stress. And like, you know, yeah. they're going to come out ears ringing. Yeah, so, but yeah, they get more vulnerable on stage. And then that's kind of the the magic of it. Back then it was like it's not as vulnerable, but it's like it's jokes. It's yeah, good. I think like stand up now, back then it was communal. So like when Louis would come out, that's probably his third or fourth appearance. You hear – Right. The acknowledgement from the audience, like, yeah, it's Louis. And yeah. We did the joke and great. And and you heard that with a lot of the regulars. A yeah. lot of the regulars on the Tonight Show. Th- that's gone. That does not exist anymore. That euphoria from the live the audience. The Tonight Show thing, yeah. The world was a lot smaller then. It's so much bigger now and it's partition and secular and niche. Right. And so it. it I don't know. To me, it's really nostalgic to get to see something like that when Dangerfield would come out right. and the crowd would go fucking nuts. Dangerfield would go, you know my doctor, Dr. Vinnie Wubatz, right? Vinnie Wubatz. And, and the crowd would go nuts because now they know they're going to hear right. 30 seconds of his doctor jokes. And I don't know. It, to me, that's what I miss when I watch these things. Right. I miss that camaraderie and communal sense of everybody getting on board going yeah. I love that. Yeah, and then like danger feels like doing the set and then going to the couch and still and still going just on, like yeah. going, 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 going. He's like sweating and is like Carson's like can't contain himself. That magic of whatever that old showbiz thing yeah. is like completely like phony now. It feels like like when yeah. I watch the Tonight Show, it's like it's fun, but it's like there's it's missing that like cool thing of like watching like whatever my uncles would sit around. It's not as talk, exciting you know? anymore. Yeah, it's not because as exciting. you back then that was it. Yeah, like, that was it. That was your podcast. That was your opportunity to get to see movie stars, rock stars, TV stars discuss something other than the TV guide, right. like People Magazine. That's it. Now, if you're in a blockbuster film, you could do Rogan. You could do you right. know, Mark Maron's podcast. Then you go do Late Night with Seth Meyers. And, you know, it, it's just not as special anymore. Yeah, no, everybody knows everything about everyone. And, yeah. like, uh, I think the artists who are really good – try to maintain some of that mystique like mm-hmm. these people who are like uh i don't know like a guy like uh like frank ocean you never right. hear about like what he's doing when his album's coming out because he realizes there's still a value in maintaining some of the illusion of yeah. like you know it's like don't go out into the crowd don't let them see you before you walk out you know there sure. has to be like i'm the guy on stage kind of thing and now it's like celebrities are kind of like hey, whatever it you know, doesn't matter really and, and celebrities, celebrities celebrity was always the um the work was was important, right? Right. Celebrity was like part of the package. It was right. the aftermath. It was like a, a a good or bad consequence, right, to your talent, right. And nowadays, celebrity is you could be a celebrity without any of the talent. Yeah. Whereas before, like if you were Burt Reynolds, yeah, you were a phenomenal actor, or Harrison Ford, or you name name an actor back then. Celebrity came with it, but now. Right. You're getting celebrities without it's the inverse. any of that shit. Right. Yeah. It was like the Tonight Show appearance was PR for the movie. Now the movie is like PR 
for the brand, the person, the Tonight Show. Exactly, ex- that's yeah. what you're buying. And and then inversely, people will they'll say movies that suck are good because the personalities that they like are in them. So there's like a or there's an agenda. Yeah. So there's like a severe quality but- drop off in art because all we care about is like the the um the love life of the artist. You know what right. I mean? So as long as they're doing everything right and being a quote unquote good person, we don't care what kind of art you're making. And it's right. like the opposite where it's like people used to be total fucking psychos, <laughs> you know, and then you didn't right. know it and then uh they would make great stuff. And then of course, yeah. Then you would find out years later you're like, "Oh my god, Chuck Perry Barry peed on a guy?" You know or whatever he did. Shit on a woman? Shit okay. on a woman, yeah. peed on All a guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we went from Louis Anderson to Chuck Berry taking a dump on somebody. <laughs> um, what do you give the bit? Uh, that one, I give it like a six. I six, give it a six out of ten. Yeah, too. six. Yeah. I think it's fair. Um, Louis Anderson, I give ten out of ten. I love him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Number three, who do we got here? Earthquake. earthquake. Oh, oh, shit. shit. Okay. Yeah, this, oh, this is about to be a thing. Thoughts on Earthquake? Uh, I've seen him here before, and it was like the... I didn't watch a lot of like um like black comedy like I watched like Cat Williams growing up but I hadn't seen like a lot of live shows. Sure. And this was the first show I had seen and it was like a totally I was like, "Oh my god." Like yeah. people were like running around and like going nuts. It, it was awesome. Earthquake. Name lives up to the billing. Totally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the pleasure of meeting once or twice coming through just in contact, but uh again, I think there is I, I think like even when you bring up like black comics, black comedy, especially when I when I first started or just even before I started, I think you like as someone that just would watch stand up, you're like, oh, this is gonna be great. If you right. saw a black comic come up, you go, oh, this is gonna be fun because for some reason there's just more, there's a more energetic yeah. um, pace to a lot of the black performers, even if you're kind of like. Still, like, like, stand still, like Lavelle Crawford. Right. Like, there's still like a wrecking ball yeah. mentality with this. I don't know. There, there's just a more energetic. You feel like they don't have off nights. You know what I mean? Like every time they're going through the tunnel, they're like, yeah. we're about to play, we're about to leave it all on the field. Almost more like an athlete. Whereas like a lot of like white comics, you'll see you go up there and be like, like we talked about earlier, like eh, I'm not really feeling it tonight. <laughs> I mean, kind of meander through a premise, and you guys kind of suck tonight, but. Like they are like putting on a well, I show. Think like Def Comedy Jam, uh, BT's Comic View. Totally. You go back and look at some of the hosts. I, I think that whoever was hosting, you know, deals. Uh, I think a little more cerebral than yeah. somebody like, uh, you know, like Talent. Talent was a host of the show Timothy Apollo, but you you have different variations of whoever was hosting. But like when, depending on that host, that host would kind of set the tone for. A lot of the performers, like when, right? I, I think Martin hosted for a little bit. Didn't Martin Lawrence host Def Comedy Jam for a minute? Yeah, and I think there you saw this frantic energy, and I, I, I think he's one of back in the day, like one of the best live performers. Oh yeah, just yeah. so good. Um, I think that kind of set the tone for a lot of the folks on those tapings. So let's uh, let's take a look at Earthquake here. That's the shit right there. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> All right, white people, I'm going to get to the joke. There we go, as expected. <laughs> Black people don't start working when they first get to their goddamn job. <laughs> Take us time. We got to find out what the fuck going on. But I like working for white people because they take excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel good today. Stay home, stay home. When you work for a nigga, ain't excuse good enough. My father died. Mine did too, nigga. What time are you coming in? <laughs> Unless you go to the funeral. I need you this Thursday. <laughs> he didn't love your ass anyway. Why are you going to the funeral? <laughs> Best job I ever had was working in the cleaners. That was a good ass job. I cried like a bitch when they fired me. <laughs> they fired me for weighing other people's shit. <laughs> I be at the club. Women like Earthquake always got something new on. <laughs> I never see that nigga wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Sometimes he changed clothes at the club. <laughs> My boy like, let me wear that shirt. I say I would, dog. Will you come to pick it up tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> got to keep it. I'm going to tell you who you don't want to work with. Mexicans. <laughs> they make a nigga look bad at the job. <laughs> they don't take no breaks or nothing. <laughs> they work eight hours straight. Skip lunch and everything. I fucked around and worked with some Mexicans putting roofs up. They can put a roof up in 30 minutes. I had to get on a ladder, on the ladder, take a break, nigga. We got eight hours. What you rushing for? They just gonna give us another roof. 
They let my black ass go. Got another Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> that was, Woo. I mean, as advertised. Great. Yeah. I think that was like half the time of the Dan Soder clip. And yeah. And it was just and like, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, 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 bang. But, I mean, the, the dry cleaner bit was so good. Oh, my God. Dude, that and I the, cried when I when I got fired from there. You think, oh, okay, it's part of the setup. What right, happened? right. I used to wear, I used to wear their shit. To go to the club. He's always got new shit on. Sometimes I'll change at the club. It's just, it's such a great, it's so fucking funny. It's great. Yeah, it's a great bit. They're just gonna give us another roof. It's such a great. Line. But again, it's also like give us another roof. He's like acknowledging things you can't say these days, I guess. Right. right? Like you right. could never, you and I certainly could never say those things on stage. Right. Well, you will. I've seen you do crowd uh, work. You'll say maybe that. Maybe I will, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting right to my car afterwards and flooring it home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think he's, I, I think he's just a great reflection of who his audience is, right? Right. And you see the audience, I, he, again, just like, again, you, you see somebody, he's just sitting there. He's not moving around much. Mm. He's not moving at all, really. He's no. He maybe took four or five steps. But there's so much energy yeah. emanating from him. Yeah, there's, like, power. coming. There's, like, trumpet players and shit where they have to like yeah. do, like, the breath control or whatever. That's what it's, like, fucking, it's insane. There's no way I could be, I could Almost perform like a, at that level for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, I think, like, you hear of, like, Kinnison's father was a preacher, and Kinnison had this almost like reverend like quality yeah. as he's, you know, delivering a sermon. Earthquake kind of has a very special, almost like a like a pastor kind of like on yeah. Sunday oh. service kind of. Oh, delivery. for sure, yeah. Very it's, passionate. Yeah, it's uh, I, I've heard that comparison before. It's like the same kind of thing. It's like going to black church. Like it's a similar communal like. Uh, it's the same kind of feeling. I'm now I'm the fucking white guy talking about shit I don't know about. But I mean that's that's it's the same like talk about black people. Talk about black people? Good, yeah, please. Nothing but nice things to say. I got nothing but good things to say. Well, say what you said off air. <laughs> before the show. About that guy that cut you off. <laughs> On the road, talk to him. Talk to us about him. What'd you say? You better talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> you better tell these people. Uh uh. I was going to say, Earthquake is like if you took, like, a, a Bernie Mac and, like, auto-tuned it, like, a half step up. You know what I mean? Or, like, the, did the crazy... He does sound like Bernie Yeah, yeah, though, too, it's yeah. like the crazy frog voice. Like, like, if Bernie Mac did, like, a helium balloon, you know, that was, and just went, like, a like a half step up, it'd be like mm -hmm. the, yeah. Just like, Bernie Mac is one of my favorites. Who's your favorite black performer? Cat Williams. Well, yeah. Chris Rock. Chris Rock is really good. Ask me who mine is. Yeah, who's your favorite black performer? All comics are just comics to me. Oh, um, damn, I don't dude. look at them as black or white or anything like that. Oh, it's dude. kind of fucked up that you do that. Oh, dude. But we did it, and we have it on tape, and oh, it's fucked shit. up. Now no, we that's your you baddie. You're Korean washing history, dude. You're, you're not seeing color. You know what I mean? Isn't that a thing? I don't Ask know. Ask me what the, the <laughs> last word that the Koreans won. What's the last word the, Korean, the Koreans won? The L.A. riots. Hey, so, uh, let's go. <laughs> earthquake, I will give. He went to the bins for that joke, dude. <laughs> Damn, that's a deep cut right there. <laughs> Damn, he pulled out the records. He sampled a fucking 1993 joke. Dude, it's like a Kanye <laughs> West song. Remix! <laughs> yeah. j j remix! <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. The L.A. Riot. Um, so what do you give that bit? That one? Yeah. I'm going to give that, like, that's like an 8, right? 8 out of 10? Yeah, that's an 8 out of 10. 8, 9. I give 8. it an 8 5. and a half yeah, out of yeah. 10. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would absolutely say, that. again, just the delivery, the material... And the, like the cadence, the tone, like him, he's a he's a great performer. Yeah, I've seen him live so many times in New York City when I was um, a host at Caroline's Comedy Club. He would right. come in all the time, and just again, like there were certain people like him, Angel Salazar. Angel, Sa I don't know Angel Salazar. He was in um, Scarface. Oh no! He shit. was in Punchline, and his he had this this line all the time. He goes, "Check it out, check it out," <laughs> and he would say, "Check it out," and. He was a guy that would just come in and fucking eviscerate a room. Oh, yeah. When I say eviscerate, I mean, like, the place would go nuts. And Angel, Earthquake, uh, Lampanelli. Yeah. Lisa Lampanelli. That's my favorite black yeah. comic. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite male comic. Yeah. Joking. I love you, Lamp. She always calls me an uppity chink. Um, oh, <laughs> This woman would fucking <laughs> destroy a room. Destroy room. I've never seen anybody in my days at the cellar when I was there. 
Like, there were some comics that had great sets. She consistently fucking annihilated. Really? So, um... I, I used to watch her on the roasts when I was a kid. The, and I was like, this, this lady reminds me of my aunt. That's, a, that's what... Was your aunt? A lot of, my aunt yeah. fucked a lot of black guys. <laughs> she listened to uh, Luther Vandross. She was all about it, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I think Earthquake is our winner today. Is that correct, Taylor? Yeah. Oh, hands down, dude. Yeah. 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 Uh, given all the scores, I, I know for it, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah Earthquake, dude. congratulations. You won this week's comedy pinata. I know you're going to tell all your friends at the barbershop. <laughs> And those are his words, not mine. Okay. <laughs> now, at the end of every episode, we uh, we watch a clip of one of us. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh no, dude. Oh, I forgot about this yeah. part. It's going to be me, Chance isn't it? Chance or Steve? Chance or Steve? Oh, um, God damn it. Let's see. I- I've had a bad luck lately of, of watching some horrible clips. Oh, i got to take shit. a so let's see. Oh, thank fucking this. God. <laughs> Chance oh, no, Willie. Dude. Chance Why Willie. Do we do this? Chance Willie. Okay. Oh, Welcome God. to the club, buddy. Who's on? Who's is in charge of yours? getting the clips? Is this, this is you, George? Which one did you get? This is? I'm not putting the headphones on. I am. Okay, yeah, you should I'm do gonna, it. I'm going to ask to play this three times, too. Oh, God, this is, this is like, making me sick to my stomach a little bit. And did you have to go to YouTube? <coughs> oh, this is on Instagram. This is my Instagram. A lot of my clips have been uh, aired on television or a streamer or whatever, but this is fine. This is okay, yeah. So we, should we just watch <laughs> this on a phone? Yeah. Or are we actually, okay, it's on a computer screen. Oh, That's look okay. at it, That's and nice. it's going to have the crop for, like, a phone, oh, fuck, too. No. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> This is, how, this is how deep in the well we had to go to find a clip for Chance Willie. Okay. This is Chance Willie. This is the one that got pulled off TikTok. Right oh, it here. did? Uh, oh, I think, I'm it, I think to watch this one did. Okay, yeah. here we go. I think the National Bomber should have blown up only the Wings mural. <laughs> These National Girls are pissed. Your market in Sweden doesn't want to get this one. Are there any East National Girls in here? Where are you at? Is that a historic church? Not anymore. Now it's a frothy monkey. Great turn. <laughs> Great to hear. <laughs> You're like apologizing for your bit as we're going. Is that it? Is that it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I like the bit. I, I I like the the end was was the joke I liked. Yeah. Um, but again, that again, like That's you were saying, work, it's yeah. very specific. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very specific yeah. bit to a moment in time. Yeah. That is uh, very communal to the area. Yeah, totally. So most people would not get that, the references or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's a uh, yeah, it's like a local uh, crowd work bit. Yeah, it's bad. It's something I thought of. It's <laughs> Listen, bad. it's not good. All right, but it's that's what you do when you host. For Steve, you go out there <laughs> and you do some shitty crowd work and you get the people on your side. You know what, what is I mean? Your, so obviously that's a crowd work bit. You have it situated in there. But uh, but that bit could be expanded into yeah. another, you know, three to four minutes. Yeah, you well, could do I, that for sure in terms of, uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. That, that goddamn term is where you come in and oh, fuck, punch it up. Spacing. No, what no, do you no, mean? Not, not the joke. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, it's I a writing term. term? No, 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 not the writing term, but the term where you go into uh, a lower income neighborhood. Oh, a gentrification. Gentrification. Oh, That's yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I so, were a better comic and a good writer, I would take that and it would turn into a, a I bit about on gentrification. The gentrification. But yeah, I mean that could that could totally be a total Yeah, that, and that's usually it, that I'll do shit like they'd either like going into something or coming out of something just to like set up the next thing, you know, yeah. just a little Little crowd work to keep them entertained. We got to get more bits on, on the World Wide Web for you. Yeah, I've got some stuff on YouTube. You just got you know George working the controls over there. He doesn't know how to use the fucking internet. You know he's still on Windows ninety seven. So <laughs> I got stuff. Everywhere. It's on my website. I got like a whole setup there. But you know, God yeah. forbid he go to my website. You know what I mean? One click more. It's in the link in the Instagram caption. And he was like, too much work. Sorry, I can't do it. Give it up for George, everybody. The 10th and final manager of Zanies. (laughs) (laughs) This place is is going to hell, man. This used to be a great club. (laughs) Well, uh, I Tim Allen used to play here. Now look at this shit. (laughs) Tim Allen did did work here. And he's got the, uh, he's got like the tools around him. And uh, he could do some work around here, by the way. Yeah, Yeah. I could use a fucking 
Tim there, the there, Tool there, Man renovations, though, to the club as we speak, right? They are. They're kind of gentrifying it. It's starting to look like a white girl's house in here, you know? They went it's going like, to turn into a frothy tones. monkey. Yeah, it's going to it's yeah, kind like, of a frothy. It kind of looks like a coffee shop in here now, you know what I mean? The kind of like the gray walls, this monochrome <laughs> shit, or like... Let's erase any, you know, kind of like uh, history. Well, I think we back in the 90s, obviously, what you needed to have was a great mullet. You needed a Fox-worthy. mullet. Foxworthy. Who's this guy right here? This guy looks like he's in Tears for Fears in the middle. Who is oh, that? that's... Uh, this is bad for the audio, but... No, no. Well, well Tim Allen, and then we got uh, oh, Paul Rodriguez. Paul Rodriguez. Paul Rodriguez. Killer Bees got the mullet. Bees. Seinfeld's got the mullet. So they all look like this. This could be like the all-star starting lineup of the Nashville Predators. <laughs> yeah, they do look like. Or like you seen the guy, uh, the uh, American curling team in the U.S. Winter Olympics. Oh my God! You yeah. seen this dude? Oh, yeah. oh, I love this guy. Yeah, yeah. How he's not a sponsor for like Slim Jim is like beyond me. Or oh, he Jolt will. Cola or oh yeah, dude. Yeah, anything, it's you'd, anything you'd buy at a seventy six station, like yeah. You would expect to see him turn around and be like, hey, what's up, man? Absolutely. <laughs> like, uh -uh. He said he's going to cut his hair off and give it to cancer, but I know the minute he gets that sponsorship, that cancer thing, oh, he's, he's keeping that hair, yeah. dude. He's keeping yeah. that hair. He'd be on the newest se uh, season of Eastbound and Down if they had one. Oh, my God, yeah. That's a, that's like the last great comedy I watched was Eastbound and Down. Really? Are we just killing time now? I don't Sorry. know. Yeah, we're just <laughs> okay, well, we did it. We did it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having Again. me on. I'm excited to do this. I want to do a solo one with you, buddy. Yeah, so this Chance is Willie is our new co-host here uh, on Comedy Pinata. And Chance Willie, can they keep up with you? ChanceWillie.com, George, if you want to just check that out. You can get a... <laughs> correctly cropped <laughs> clip for the podcast uh chancewilly.com for all my dates and you can find my podcast animal secrets on the uh podcast tab so yeah very nice and we will be back next week with another episode of uh comedy pinata guys again keep the comments coming thank you so much subscribe if you enjoy the show share it with your friends and uh leave us a little review we do always appreciate that again we're new still working out the kinks but i think we got a great team now we worked out a lot of sound issues a lot of visuals so the cameras are up to sp up to par for we sure got a great co-host let's go I'm, just, yeah. I'm happy to be on board dude let's do so it so thank you guys again and obviously let us know who you'd like to see on the show or clips of your favorite comedians that we should be watching as well so keep in touch with us let us know on youtube or on the reviews on itunes all that good stuff thank you guys very much and once once again, thank you to our sponsor, Sue the Collector. Sue the Collector dot com. There we go. Getting yeah. the, getting the bucks in. The he knows Sue what the to Collector, baby. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're at, if you come through uh, Zanies, you gotta come down. Or if you come through Nashville, you gotta come down to Zanies. And remember, yeah. if the Repo Man comes to your house, you don't <laughs> hey, have to let him take it. your car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it, baby. <laughs> so yeah, Sue that Collector. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> that job, was buddy. fun, huh? Beauty.